All right, welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard. We will have Knockdown Jay with Jason McIntyre on later. But first, it is my pleasure to bring on a longtime friend and colleague, Rick Buecher. You all know him, I'm sure, from ESPN and Sirius Radio. And man, we go back over 20 years. Yeah, we do. We go back to covering the league together for ESPN. Hooping together. Yeah, I was going to say some of the most legendary media games ever. For sure, for sure. (laughs) And certainly most competitive uh, back in the day. That's how we met, actually. Yep. Yep. Playing media basketball. Three on three. Yep. Beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> and being able to play, you know, the beauty of it, I don't know that the, they still get to do it because security is ramped up and yeah. all of that. But we used to, like, we used to be able to play pickup on the actual courts. Yep. Yeah, we played in the Alamo Dome. We yep. played in played Golden, Miami. At Golden State, Miami. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. It was, it was, do you still play? I still, uh, I, yeah, I'm playing, my, my kids are young teenagers okay, now. Okay. And they, they both play. You yet? So, it's a challenge. I, you know, I worked my, my way down. It was before I would only take jump shots. Okay. And then it was I would only finish with my off hand, my right hand. <laughs> now it's like you gotta anything go I got to do, I got to go. <laughs> I got to do whatever I can. Elbows. Do it. Oh, and, and by the way, like my daughter, like no one can beat her in horse. Really? She is a shooter. And she's like... And she doesn't do try to fancy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll yeah. just kill you with the mid range and like the three that. all day long. <laughs> it's just it's aggravating as hell. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, look, man, it's great to have you. Good great to, be here. to talk Thanks with for you again. Me. I just want to get your thoughts. We know you got a wealth of NBA knowledge, um, going way back, but also current day. So let's just get right to it. LeBron James goes to the Lakers in free agency. Do you think he made the right call? It, Yes, because it was really the only realistic call that he could make. And let's face it, take aside everything that he said about why he's doing yeah. it or being in championship mode or any of that stuff. He's set up to want to live in L.A., to work in L.A. after his career. Mm. He's going to have, he gets, he gets to join a franchise that is one of the legendary franchises. So for all of that, I, I can't fault him at all for making the decision that he made. Now, do I think he's going to win another championship? No, I, I, I don't you, think you so. Don't think so. I, okay. I, I just I don't think so, and I don't I don't think that's the be all and the end all for him now. If he does, it's then he puts himself in very rare air. He's won three championships with three different yep. teams. But for me, it's really about setting everything else up for him. And it, it, above and beyond everything else, my understanding is. He just didn't want to be associated with Dan Gilbert anymore. And people, if, if it was about championships, it was about winning, then we know the control and the, and the influence that he has. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He could have probably set it up to go to Houston or to Philadelphia or someplace yeah, else that yeah. it would have been about all that. It's not here. It's, he gets to have, be on the ground floor and help them build whatever it's going to be. I just don't know on the timeline for him physically that it's going to be on a timeline it's going to be quick enough for him yep. to win to win another one cuz he's defied father time all this time and i know how much time he puts into making sure he's in supreme condition yeah but as we both know and not to put us in the category of his <laughs> athleticism but it's just we've seen it already yeah. he's not no the question. same guy just like kobe wasn't the same guy it, Michael Jordan wasn't yep. the same guy. Kevin, you can go down the line. There's a certain number of NBA minutes that you have on your body before it starts to take yep. its toll. And we're seeing that with him now. Let me ask you this quickly, because everybody talks about the GOAT conversation. And yeah. People feel like he's got to win more rings. I have a hunch, and I haven't talked to you about this. Yeah. I'd say he's the second best player ever behind Jordan. Mm-hmm. My hunch is that you do not have him that high. Where do you have him in the GOAT talk? See, it's, it's, I hate this debate. <laughs> I, I, I hate this because, because if, you're, if you're going to use the template for what we judge Jordan by, I can't use that same template with LeBron. You, you go to six championship, you go to six finals, you win six. It, 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 saying you went to nine, like... The thing that makes LeBron unique 
is his longevity, mm -hmm. is that he's maintained yep. his athleticism for as long as he has. He's been as great as he's been for as long as he has. But that's kind of a different, that's a different category yeah. than the excellence within a certain period of time. And so I, I, you know, off the top of my head, I wouldn't put him second. I'm certainly not going to put him first. Do you have Jordan first? I have Jordan first. Okay. And then, and then it just becomes, you know, it, it's just a yeah, mixed so bag. Great, well, let me ask you this. Do you have LeBron ahead of Kobe? I do not have LeBron right. ahead of Kobe. Uh, again, if we're going, here's the thing. I could put him at the top if we're talking about longevity. Mm -hmm. If you want to say excellence for this period of time, Michael was never that, not was never 15, great yep. for that long. Nine championships. Michael took a year off in between the yep. three peats. Like, there's a lot of things I could say, hey, for whatever you want to say about LeBron, he never took any time off. Yep. He's kept this train rolling. So, in that respect, if we were going to go by that template, I could say, he's done yep. it. And then there's, like, all the other things. You know, the social conscience. Yep. The, the cultural difference. Yep. The, he's, he's been such a positive... Uh, influence on Akron in, a, in any number of ways. Like, there's so much that LeBron has done that I can't say, you know, Kobe's done yep. some good things. Michael did some good things. They didn't do yeah, all these the things. Yep. So, if, if you put it in a particular prism, I could put them right at the top. But if we're going to go by kind of the standard that we've used mm -hmm. all along the way, then I can't. We used to debate on ESPN.com. I don't know, we did it for a year About or everything. Two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we talked about LeBron, and you said something. This this was, gosh, he probably was still in Cleveland. Yeah, his the first, first time. time. And you said something that now I really do think rings very, uh, may ring true. You said the comparison, everybody's talking about Jordan, LeBron. Yeah. He really may be this generation's Wilt Chamberlain. I agree. I so still talk, agree. talk about that. Yeah, just because it's his freak of nature physicality you know and the position that he played and the skills that he has mm -hmm. that just made him different completely different and at the same time you know Wilt had his issues with free throws yeah. Wilt had his you know he could be great but was he great at the right moments yeah. Yeah. he could be up and down and inconsistent um, he was a great personality. He was a great influence socially and culturally. That's a nice he was way in the movies, like, <laughs> but you're right in a movie. variety of ways. I mean, <laughs> you're you're talking one, and that's certainly part of it. But I, I just that to me that connection and that yeah, idea that right. will that's like accurate. for to win, will always needed that other guy. And he did. He was by far the best player in the world. Yeah. But didn't win nearly as much as you would have thought. Exactly. And sometimes I wonder if it's because they did. He did so much so well mm -hmm. that he kind of did it all. Mm -hmm. And LeBron's similar. Yeah. Like LeBron becomes the system. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think that's that's yes. why he can make any. He could take me and you. Yes. And we'd be yes. a great team. Yes. But I think he has trouble beating a talented group. Right. That plays as a team. San right. Antonio, right. Golden State. Right. Well, and it also, it's why veterans have always worked better with him. Yeah. Because you need to be able to be able to read and react to him. You're not running a specific system. Mm -hmm. You're going down the floor, and you need to be able to affect the game without the ball in your hands. That's why, you know, him going to the Lakers with this group. Like, everybody's like, oh, Kyle Kuzma, and Brandon Ingram, <laughs> and Lonzo Ball. I'm like... Well, but they're not going to have the ball the way yep. they did before. So the numbers aren't going to be the same. And can they, like Kyle Korver's a great piece to have next to him. Because Kyle Korver's just going to read and react. Yep. I'm going to be yep. here if you need Goes me. Right you know, J.R. Smith, too, kind of the same thing. Yep. Yep. And then I'm going to defend at one end or I'm going to stay. I'm always going to be in the right place at the right time. He's going to have none of that here. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it just... The system is, is LeBron. It's also why when he leaves and teams yes. crater, yes. it's because they, you, you, can't, yeah, because it, you took the reason. centerpiece exactly. out of this thing, right? It's the tent, and you took yep. the main tent pole out. Yep. It doesn't, it doesn't right. necessarily, like, you, you have That's to build the point. team to him. And you see guys that were, like, great players in their own right or wanted the ball in their hands and had the confidence 
they don't last with him. Yeah. Like Dion Waiters, whatever you think of him. Yeah. Like, no, dude, like. Yeah. Kyrie wanted, I mean, Kyrie, he didn't know from thing. possession to possession. Am I bringing it up? Am I on the wing? Am I in the corner? Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then when you're like getting all of the heat, and I don't yes, think this is yes. all just from LeBron. Yeah. It's just from the outside. Yep. When it's constantly, oh, you know, Kyrie doesn't have any, any assist. Yeah. Whoa, what are you doing? Like, we, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. wait a minute, you're beating me up. You're, I'm not handling the ball. I, that's not my job yeah. here, right? Yeah. 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 So I think that's where it becomes a challenge. And now, you know, it's, it's a little bit like the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. It's like Kawhi and San Antonio. And LeBron is hitting this spot now where there was a time where even being in Cleveland, you'd want to play with LeBron because you're like, I'm going to be in the finals yep, yep. and I could win a championship. I could get a ring. That, you know, playing in San Antonio under pop, that, like, guys would make sacrifice. Yep. New England, make That's a sacrifice. Right. Now, oh, wait a minute. I got to put up with all this <laughs> and I'm not maybe not getting a ring out of it. Yeah, like, do yeah. I, well, do do I you, do really want to put up with this? Do you think there is a feeling among maybe a growing feeling among a lot of players that they don't want to play with LeBron? I don't think it's like so much. They don't want to play with LeBron as much as this is what playing with LeBron means. It means that if things go wrong, I'm probably going to get the blame mm -hmm. and I am decidedly second banana. Yep, now, by far, how do yeah. you get a great player? Even Russell Westbrook, you know, he coexisted with KD. In fact, KD was the bigger star. Yep. So yep. Paul George looks at that and goes, he's not worried. Whatever we think on the outside about playing with Russell, he doesn't look at it and go, well, Russell's going to suck all the air out of the room, yeah. right? Yeah, he's going to exactly. have all the endorsements. He's going to have all the attention. No, I've seen it work otherwise. Yeah. With LeBron, like everybody takes yeah. a back seat to no LeBron. Question. And it's not... I don't mean blame him for it. It's just the it's reality the, exactly. of the situation. It's, it's the media. It's the outside world. All for that. sure. So let's talk about the players they added. You talked about the young guys they have. They added Lance Stevenson, mm -hmm. JaVale McGee, Rajon Rondo, Kentavious Caldwell Pope, who yep. was there last year. What do you think about what we see? I mean, they didn't add any shooting. It's a bit baffling no. to me. What do you think? Well, I, I, I think that they looked at it and on one-year deals – you weren't going to be able to get the ideal players to fiddle around LeBron. Okay. So what you got were guys that he respects. Like Lance Stevenson and all that goofy stuff, like it might have annoyed LeBron, yeah. but the fact is Lance wasn't afraid of him. No question. Lance, Lance was more than happy to defend him, to go at him. Rajon Rondo, same yeah. thing. Even JaVale McGee, get ISO'd on him. JaVale McGee's like, let's go. And we'll yep. try to get something done. Yep. LeBron respects that. So maybe I can't get a player who's perfect for me, but I want to ride with guys that I know are not, if they're not afraid of me and I'm the best player in the league, then I got to believe they're not afraid of anybody. And I'd rather roll with guys who yeah. think they can he play got some dogs, yeah. as opposed to like, you know, I get you. the guys who, who, it might be a shooter, but when I swing it to you, you you're going to give it back it. to yeah. me. Right? <laughs> I don't need that. Well, so how good will they be hmm. th this year or next year or whatever? I, you know, I, look, I, I always think the people in Vegas are really smart because they got a lot more money <laughs> invested was, in yeah, it to be was, smart than I do. <laughs> but I, don't, I think there's a huge overreaction I to this. Agree. And maybe it is, maybe what they're anticipating is that ultimately Kawhi is going to be here. Because I do think that that changes the template no question. somewhat. I don't know that it immediately puts them, you know, at the top or a, a, a title contender, but it would make a big difference. But right now, uh, there's two things. Number one, look at when LeBron went to Miami, and that was with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. They started slowly, right? They weren't even 500, yep. 40 games into the yep. season. Look at when he went back to Cleveland. They started point. slowly, right? It always takes some time to get up to speed. Mm -hmm. I would expect it's going to be the same thing here. They're not going to come. Look and at he when they have as much talent as he had in those places. Exactly, yeah. and that's on top of it. Like yeah. you don't have a Kyrie and a Kevin Love. You don't have Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. So chances are you're going to start slowly, and then where are you going to pick up? <laughs> like, are you suddenly going to like jet that's off right. into yeah. the? Just right. stream. I, 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 I don't know. So 
Like, I have them at 46 wins, which puts them in the playoffs, I believe. But, you know, in the in the mix of teams that are catching that 6th, 7th, 8th seed. Yeah. And yeah. then if it's that, and you're going with this young crew against, you know, Houston or Golden State or Oklahoma City, you know, are you, you getting out of the first round? Early. So... Look, I, I I just I just think that's I think that's a realistic expectation, and I'm putting them in the playoffs only basically because of LeBron. I mean, <laughs> no question. Everything yeah. else, yep. it's like, yep. why, why should I believe? How volatile? I mean, Rondo, who by his own admission has never had a coach he got along with. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, Lance, you know, uh, LeBron. There's always some drama around LeBron. You got Javel, you got Lonzo and Levar. <sighs> Do you think there's going to be a ton of drama and, and just <laughs> blow-ups and, you know, yeah. all this stuff coming out of here? Uh, I think there's going to be drama. I think, I mean, there has to be, right? There has to be. Because, Le- look, be. when LeBron's teams have not started well, he has not reacted well to that. No. No, know? he has not. This is, going to be in, this is going to be new. But, I mean, even, I mean, we had drama last year. Lonzo and LeVar. Yep. And this was a 35-win team. I would think LeVar will to. tone down. I think he's smart enough to know, okay, we're not the show anymore. I better tone it down. If he doesn't, they'll be out of there if they can trade him. Why do you believe that LeVar's <laughs> going to do that? What, what, so you, what about what about LeVar that, says to you, <laughs> hey, you know what? You're right. I should pipe down. <laughs> that dude went overseas to keep his act going. What, like... Well, I, I, this platform's going to be bigger than ever. It's going to be huge. Do you think he's going to be able to resist that? I, I just think, well, we haven't it's heard anything yet, man. thankfully. We haven't heard anything yet. We haven't heard him welcoming LeBron in some crazy way. That's true. But That's, uh, I, you know what? That's I, true. I just think, like last year, the Lakers needed Lonzo for the to make him relevant. Yeah. Let's, I mean, obviously, they're the Lakers. They're relevant. But... He brought, you know, he was the show. He was the story. Mm-hmm. Now, he's clearly not the story. I mean, he may not even start, you know. So, and I think the Lakers, you, you've heard things, I'm sure. I've heard things. I mean, if they could get a good deal for him, yeah. they'd be open to moving him. So, I, and I just think LeVar may be smart enough to see that stuff and tone it down. He'll make some comments here and there. I may be wrong, but this is just my gut. Yeah, and ultimately, I... To me, it's not like I don't know that Lavar's really going to upset the apple cart. I mean, that, that 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 even if he is out there, that that's going to have a huge influence on the locker room. Mm-hmm. And this is the weird part: is that like Lance Stevenson talking to guys, he's a great locker yeah. room guy. Like he's yeah. not as advertised on the floor. And Rajon Rondo, I, I have the utmost respect for yep. him, and the, particularly the way he handled things in Chicago. I think New Orleans is going to miss him. I thought he was, an, I I thought he was important I thought was to Anthony Davis. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not worried about like these guys going at each other in the locker room and that being an issue. I just think it's going to be a struggle on the floor mm-hmm. like to make it all fit, fit together. Because... Rajan plays with a very high IQ and he has ideas. You don't like you can't play him off the ball. Yeah. And I don't think he will and this is I'm not saying this in a negative. I don't know that he'll defer to LeBron. No, I don't think he will right? either. I, I mean uh, yeah, unless there's yeah. I, I mean I, he'll look for him, obviously he'll look right, at him as a scorer right, but right. It, but he's not going to like no. He's not going to do what Derrick Rose did, yeah. which was hand it off and run to the corner. <laughs> that's right. That's I mean, right. that's really what he that's did. Right. And as a result, Derrick Rose couldn't do anything. Well, they, I've said it uh, on the radio since these moves have been made. In a different way, it kind of reminds me that this year's what we see in the Lakers right now to what Cleveland was last year at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Remember they added Rose, yeah. D. Wade, yeah. Le- yeah. you got LeBron, yeah. Isaiah Thomas. Yep. And on paper... Remember LeBron, everybody thought, we got tons of talent. We're going to be gr- mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. And it didn't fit. That's, yeah. I kind of see this. How's this going to fit? Well, it goes, back, it goes back to the whole idea that, you know, Derrick Rose was used to playing and having the yeah. ball in his hands. Like, LeBron is going to have the ball in his hands. So Lance 
you know, even they, Lance. Yeah, he's a bit of a playmaker. He maker needs the ball himself. in his yep. hands. Like he's a one-on-one yep. guy. Yeah. Rajah needs the ball in his hands. Lonzo will give it up early, but really, uh, like. What's he gonna do without? Yeah. It, he, unless that it, it, shot somehow miraculously improves. Right? <laughs> so, you know, even Kyle Kuzma isn't so much a catch and shoot yeah. guy. He's a nice breakdown guy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I think is gonna be the struggle is how do you get the best out of every guy with only one ball? Yeah. And I know it worked with Harden and, and Chris Paul, and you can trade off two yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially guys that can shoot the ball the and way you they can. And shooters around them, too. And you open up space. Yep. yep. But this, like, wh- who do you have to stay home on? How crowded is that paint going to be? I was saying they almost looked like they were building a team for the 90s. <laughs> you know I mean? It's, where it's all around the paint. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, uh, I, it, it is. And that's why, again, kind of going back to your original question, when it comes to LeBron and the yeah. decision that he made, yeah. It, it, this has so little to do with basketball. He it, he yeah, he, he knows fame. the yep. game. I yep. mean, he yep. knows th- this was. I, I want to get away from Dan. I want to get out of Cleveland. I want to set myself up in L.A. Yep. So he's accomplished all that. And you're starting from a blank slate. So you're going to get have the opportunity to build something. It's just a matter: can you build it in time before, you know, wh- before while you he's still fame. a dominant player? Yep. Now you know Kobe Bryant well. He's been very complimentary of the move to get LeBron. How you is that true or is there a little <laughs> yeah. man? This pretty quick. Y'all moved on pretty fast without me or what? What yeah. do you think? No, I honestly I believe that. He, look, when he was one of the reason, one of the things that really burned him when there was the whole Kobe Shaq thing was part of it was Shaq, but part of it was the outside. Mm. Everybody going, oh, you know, T Mac. Penny, Vince, if they were in That's Kobe's right. shoes yeah. and they were on this team, they'd have all the championships he had. He was like, do you not know who I am? <laughs> do you not know what I do? You don't, you don't know the difference between me and them. Let me show you. Yeah. And that's why when Shaq left, it was like, yeah, Let okay, watch. Yep. Yep. This is the reverse of that. This is, oh, you think playing for the Lakers is easy? You think living in L.A. and having all these stars and – like uh, entertaining them and being successful in their eyes and like measuring against Magic and Kareem and all these. You think that's easy? You think LeBron's better than I am? (laughs) Let's see. Let's see. Bring him in in here, right? That's a great take, yeah. Let's see if he can meet all of the expectations that this franchise meets. And I think he also knows, as we've talked, like if LeBron wins another championship, I mean, honestly, at this stage where this franchise is right now, if he wins another championship with the Lakers before he retires, yeah. it will match the uh, uh, the achievement of winning a championship in Cleveland. Yeah, as he did. Like yeah. it would to me, it, th- those two would be equal. Yeah. So I think I think Kobe also looks at it and goes, "I got five. He got th- he's he, he has three. Ain't no way he's catching me. <laughs> Ain't no way. If he was in Philly, if he yeah, was in Houston, yeah, yeah, or like yeah. wherever he was, who knows what happens to the Western Conference if he's in the East. He yeah. gets to the finals, somebody gets hurt. He, yeah. he, he wins another one like he won the last one in Cleveland, right? <laughs> Steph gets hurt. Yeah. Bogut gets hurt. Andre, you know, like that whole thing. It, it, it lines up. Draymond gets suspended. It could happen. Yeah. Now yeah. he's looking at it going, and Not with this. There's no way he's <laughs> catching my five. I'm good. So, LeBron, come on down. <laughs> well, and that's what I said when it was all the talk about LeBron going to L.A. I said, look, in L.A., everybody mm-hmm. of his stature that's played for the Lakers, except Elgin Baylor, mm-hmm. won a championship, mm-hmm. at least one. Mm-hmm. So if you go there and you don't, mm-hmm. it's not going to look good. It's not, and it's really not fair. I mean, it's really not fair. Yep. I, I personally am not going to judge him on that because I'm looking at it going in, saying this team's not ready. It's going to be tough, yep. And, like, so after a year of whatever this is, is it going to be more attractive? Like, it, it depends. Yep. Like, it doesn't. So, what? and then, and then are, have you upgraded all these other pieces? Yeah. Like, are they going to look better or worse for playing – 
next to LeBron. Are their numbers are going to be better or worse? So are you increasing the trade yeah, value right, of these pieces when you try to, 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 to rejigger it? I, that's where, yeah, like, that's I don't know how, the, you know, everybody just assumes, okay, this is an off year, but by next year they'll be there. I mean, maybe, yeah. but there's just as good a possibility that it's, that's a great point. Another year of trying to put yep. some pieces together. Because the young guys might not look as good this year. There's no question. So let me ask you this then, the elephant in the room. Do mm. you think they get Kawhi? I don't. Okay. I, well, at least not this year. I mean, you, you do not the think line, the Spurs will trade him. I think the Spurs will, I think the Spurs will trade him. I think they're going to trade him to the East. Philly, I think Philly, I think, Philly, is the, yeah. I think Philly makes the most sense. If, if you can get a Dario Saric and you can get a pick, I know that doesn't sound like a ton for Kawhi Leonard, but the fact is Dario Saric is going to want to stay there. Mm -hmm. And this is the beauty, especially. And he can play. I, I, I like great him. With I Pop, like him. Yeah. yeah. And, and I like him playing off of LaMarcus Aldridge. I think there's some, I think there's some grit there, and he's going to yep. be happy in San Antonio. He's not going to be looking to go someplace yep. else. And then you have that pick that – the Miami pick in 2021? Yeah, yep. which is which is always, like, that's always the great, especially in today's, you know, mm -hmm. Philadelphia lived off of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we suck. We're really bad. And, but we got that pick. Yeah. <laughs> and, your, and your fan base is like, oh, we got the pick. Like, yep. they can imagine it's going to be some great player. Yeah. San Antonio can get through this. And, but, but, and, and besides, there's such a great system group that they're always going to be a good regular season team. No question. Right? I mean, they're always going to be in the hunt. They're, even yeah. without Kawhi, you still expect they're going to win yep. 46, 47, 48 games. They'll be in the playoffs. And you get the, you know, and, and who knows, maybe they get, they get an additional pick. Mm -hmm. But the key is going to be that they get, they get to negotiate with Brett Brown, a San Antonio guy. And that's important because... Nobody knows Kawhi Leonard's guys. That's like right. Mitch Frankel has no reputation. Yep. So being able to do a deal through them is going to be really challenging, yep. and especially for somebody who needs Mitch or needs them to say, yeah, we're, we'll stay, yep. or we're not going to stay. Yep. Like Brett Brown can at least have a conversation with Kawhi yep. and honestly know where things stand, and I think that's going to be really important in the Spurs being able to get something of value. So the big, one of the big stories uh, this week or early this week was Boogie Cousins going yeah. to Golden State. Um, what, I mean, you saw the Twitter reaction yeah. is yeah. just the NBA is a joke now. Yeah. You know, it's, what are your thoughts on that, Sonny? I, honestly, I don't – first of all, having a team, having a great team is the blueprint for the NBA success. The ratings all say yep. that when you have a super team, especially with superstars on it, that's what draws the most attention from the mainstream. And come on, let's face it. I'm only disappointed that Boogie's not going to play until February. <laughs> right, right, Aren't right. you dying to see what that oh, looks like? Oh, my gosh. Like, everybody is. Yep. And so yep. it's not a matter of, well, you know, I'm the Orlando Magic and... I'm not going to have a chance against that team. No, it's when that circus comes yeah. to town. It's you're sold out. See That's, that. right. That's right. That's right. It'll so, be like the Jordan Bulls. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. I mean, that's what draws the attention. The NBA is not like the NFL. Like when you got eight, nine teams and nobody knows. First of all, it's a transaction league, I believe now. The reason it owns Agreed. the social space and the, and, and the media is because there's always deals going on. Mm -hmm. There's the movement mm -hmm. or there's the possibility of superstars changing places. Mm -hmm. There's no other sport that has that. And Adam Silver said this to me years and years ago when he was not the commissioner, when he was, I forget what his title was, yeah, assistant deputy, or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. He said, you know what the dirty little secret about our league is? Nobody watches the games and it doesn't matter. Now, this was 15 <laughs> years ago, wow. maybe even a little longer. And that's the reality is that now, like how many people go to games or how many people watch games from beginning to end, as opposed to how many people are watching for highlights? That's right. 
How many right. people are playing fantasy? How many people want to know what LeBron put on his Instagram? Yeah. How many, like, yeah. they have all these streams of interest, but they're not the actual game. Yeah. So this only continues that it's that just interest, a story line. It's right? not about the game, yeah. And, and here's point. the thing with DeMarcus and Golden State. Like, this is a tryout by him for the rest of the league. This is where I don't think it's a, it, everybody's saying it's a genius move by the Warriors. I think it's a genius move by DeMarcus Cousins. Mm. He gets to play with a championship team. He gets to play with a team that doesn't need him right away and he knows he's going to be there in the postseason. He gets to, uh, uh, so he's going to have all of that. He gets to play on a team that can feature him in ways because mm -hmm. they have the spacing yep. and the scoring and everything. Yep. And so then, and he, and he gets to prove, hey, look, I get along with all these guys. Yep. I get along with other great players. Yep. And I want a ring. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a free agent. And the only way they can get him back is to sign him to another luxury tax mid-level. Yep. Well, that's not what he's playing for. Now, this is the danger. From what I've been told, they want him to come off the bench. They want him to be the anchor of their second unit. So they can keep that small ball team mm -hmm. together intact, which makes sense. Yep. And say, we're going to put Sean Livingston, and we're going to put Quinn Cook, and we're going to put Pat Mc Patrick McCall. We're going to put all these guys around, and you're going to be the featured guy. Now, he's never come off the bench no. in his career. <laughs> can he adapt to that role? And will he accept that role knowing that he's auditioning yep. for everybody else? Yep. That's yep. the great risk in this. Aside from the fact that we've never seen a guy tear his Achilles and come back and be the same guy. That's right. So this idea that they just added a four-time All-Star, maybe not. I don't, right. I don't know. Elton Brand was a two-time All-Star, yep. tore it. He was a double-double machine. He was a 2010 guy. He was a 15 and 8 guy after that, never sniffed being an All-Star yep. again. Yep. Well, let's close with this uh, game called Good, Bad, and Ugly. Oh, All right, the good, okay. the bad, the ugly. I like games. All right, give me a quick explanation, but I'm going to roll through some of the signings, and you get put it into one of those categories. Was okay. this signing good, bad, or ugly? Okay. And give me a quick ex explanation. Mm. Chris Paul, four years, 160, $160 million with the Rockets. I'm going to say good <laughs> because you didn't have any choices, yeah. but – Man, I don't want to see what it looks like in that fourth year. They better, they better hope the salary cap is really jacking yep. up through the roof so they're going to have space to do some other things. I was thinking, saying three years, I would have loved him in three years. Yeah. But, you know, you had to get him there. All right, Paul George, four years, $137 million in OKC. Oh, so good. So good. And for Russell Westbrook, changes the whole dynamic. Yeah. And I'm of the mind that I was around them when they played Utah. I think they can make it work. I think, they, I think they have a chance of being a really special team. I think they can contend. What do you think happens with Melo? I think, they, I think he either has a transformation and accepts the role, yeah. or they buy him out, or they, they like, I could see them moving on. If, okay. if, if, he, if he doesn't come correct, I could see them moving on. They save him a ton of money, too. Wave him and stretch him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a hundred million yeah, off yeah. of the tax. <laughs> that's yeah. that's tempting. All right, DeAndre Jordan, one year, twenty-four million, Dallas. Bad. Yeah, I didn't get this one. Yeah, it's almost like the girl that you tried to date and <laughs> she wouldn't have anything to do with you, right. and then she comes back around and you go, "All right, I, I'm so really not into her she was anymore." Fly. Yeah, she's not that hot. <laughs> Anymore, but I still got to, you know, I want to check that box. <laughs> but look, DeAndre Jordan type, it's at least a one year. Yeah. Like the one that scares me. I don't know if we've got Clint Capella on there. Tell Woo! me about that. Got to load up on that. Like, if you can't shoot a jump shot in this league, I don't care what position you play. That's where we're going. Now, Houston has to bring him back, though, don't you think? You, they have to. Yeah. They have the to. The question is how much. Well, yeah, and if somebody, I mean, if I'm another team, I'm putting an offer sheet out there. Because they have to match, but I want to hamstring them mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. This one, a little lower, lower name, Doug McDermott, three years, 22 million Pacers. For the value of scoring in this league, I know $8 million a year sounds like, or seven-some a, a year sounds yeah. like a lot for Doug McDermott. 
the value of, of shooting. I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. Last one. Julius Randle, two years, 18 million, Pelicans. Uh, good. Yeah. It, it, I, I think he's going to – I think he gives you grit. You know what's amazing? Like a year ago, I was not. I thought nah. he was a one-handed yep. – I thought he was Tyreek Evans at the beginning. Only went one direction, yep. limited. There are so many guys I've talked to in the league who – really are impressed with the grit and the competitive fire of Julius Randle. And I think he's a perfect fit next to Anthony Davis because yeah. I think you need that kind of guy next to him to keep him going. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's a good one. There All was right. no uglies. There was no, 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 any ugly signings? Not on this list, but just in general? I'm trying to think who's out there that the Darkest Cousins one could be ugly. That could wind up being ugly. See, I, I think that if if it goes south for whatever reason, because yeah. he's not happy with his role, because he's not getting along in the locker room, to me, they can just cut him. Well, you know? they can, but their bench they was thin. They won't have a big. Yeah. Their, ben, but their bench was thin. They're not going to have a big. And you could have used that, that luxury tax mid-level exception. Could you have gotten, I don't know, and Avery Bradley, could you have gotten a, a Tyreek Evans? Could you have gotten somebody who's going to be there all year long and made you even you better you. at your small ball? Yeah. yeah we'll see. That'll yeah, be we'll interesting. See. It's going to be fun. Rick Buecher, thanks, man, for coming Pleasure, in man. the zone. Great reuniting with you. Absolutely. All right, you know what time it is. It's time for Knockdown J, where I knock them down every <laughs> single week. Not today. <laughs> My man, J Mack. Good What's to happening, see you again, brother? CB. It's been a while. Yeah, I'm ready to do a victory lap over LeBron to LA. Uh, oh, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. sources on that, huh? No, yeah, all year, baby. Went, you just went with everybody months. else. Oh, yeah. You were yeah, just yeah. one of the million sure. saying he's going to the Lakers. Since right? last July, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it's good. It's good for the NBA. Good for this show? Maybe we get yeah. him in the zone? Yeah, it'd be nice. Come I, on, I can't LeBron. promise that, but <laughs> you never know. You never know. We'll see. But um, obviously been a great free agency. Tremendous. So I know you got some big time I've topics I've got some for big me, time so topics. with your uh, best shot. So, Chris, obviously LeBron to the Lakers, the biggest news in the NBA by far. Um, unfortunately, he didn't come with another superstar right. the way he did to Miami and then back to Cleveland. However, he added JaVale McGee. Did you just say he also added Lance did you Stevenson? Did say that with a straight face? He he, <laughs> he kept KCP. Um, added Rajon Rondo. I forgot about. Is it Rajon or Rajon? Uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah. Maybe I, we'll get I, him. I, in I the used zone. to know, but now yeah. I, I don't know. Either way, he's added a lot of spare parts. Him and Magic. Let me give Magic some credit. I do like what the Lakers have done. Let me add this: they won 35 games last year. Brandon Ingram missed 23 games. Yeah. Lonzo missed 30. They had a bunch of just parts mixed in and still won 35 That's games in the West. Right now, so I thought that was a, a good accomplishment last year. I think LeBron automatically adds a good 15, 16 wins. I think the Lakers, probably third in the West, I believe they're title contenders. Chris, are the Lakers title contenders? Title contenders, meaning they could win the championship next year. That's a title contender, right? Yes. That's our, no. No. As great as LeBron James is, the Lakers as currently constituted. Now, we're not adding in Kawhi. As currently constituted, the Los Angeles Lakers will not have a chance to win the NBA title. Let's mark that down because uh, he's saying no chance whatsoever. No chance. They are not an NBA title contender. When was the last time LeBron was counted out? Hold on. LeBron Mm. is in the Western Mm. Conference now. Yes. Okay? That Cleveland Cavaliers team that he just took to the NBA Finals – May have gotten knocked out in the first round of the playoffs uh, in the they West. They almost got knocked out in the East in the first round. Yeah, but they, I mean, they they very easily could have been beaten mm-hmm. in the first round. And that's not a knock on LeBron. It's just a knock on, it's the Western Conference. Mm-hmm. It's a lot tougher on it. First of all, you got these young kids around him. Let's see how they play with LeBron. Because Jordan Clarkson, uh, uh, Larry Nance Jr., they were a part of this Oh, the Lakers got all these great young players. They were in that mix. Certainly. And then we saw them on the big stage under the pressure of playing with the greatest player in the world where every game matters, where it's championship or bust, and they crumbled. They did, yeah. They crumbled. So let's see how Kyle Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram play off LeBron Mm -hmm. with the stakes much higher. Then 
I'm fine. I love the one-year deals because you're say, saving your cap room yes. for next year. But the Lakers look to me like they're building a team for 1997. Oh, stop Where is the shooting? Where is the shooting? They were 29th in the league in three-point shooting last year. LeBron James, for the last eight years of his career, it has been about space the floor with three-point shooters and let LeBron create and do his thing. Mm -hmm. The Lakers certainly aren't going to be able to play that way. And with Luke Walton, who comes out of the Golden State coaching tree, he wants that type of motion, free-flowing, quick ball movement. Offense, Rondo. Rondo's not a shooter. Doesn't hey, stress the floor. Rondo Can't made play eight three-pointers in two playoff series. Ben Simmons made zero last year. Continue. Oh, okay, fine. Everybody knows Ben Simmons is not a three-point shooter. Rondo's far from a three-point shooter. Yeah, yeah. Can't spread the floor. Lance Stevenson no, he's can't not shoot shooter. the three. Right, right, right. Now, now, they got some playmakers, yeah. but none of them are shooters. They were a horrible three-point shooting last team last year, and they, they're adding players that can't shoot. Chris, you've been covering basketball for a long time. You've seen LeBron generate enough offense that the team's got to double him. The defense have to attract to LeBron to slow yeah. him down. Those open shots last year that his Kyle Korver was getting and all Kevin Love, they're going to be open shots for Brandon Ingram, who had a good you year shooting threes. Brandon Ingram no, too. not yet. He shot 1.8 threes a game. Yeah. So the 39 percent, it'll lessen as he takes more threes. Uh, if maybe he takes unless more threes. he's taking open threes. Kyle Kuzma, good. They took not open great threes last shooter. year. Possible. I'm not going to put Lonzo in there because we know he struggled from deep. I'm just saying I believe those shots will be a lot easier when, A, LeBron is creating that space on the floor to get them the ball in good spots. The guys you mentioned, how much are they going to be on the floor? The Ingram and Kuzma, yeah. and I love both of them. But Lonzo, I mean, he's going to have to battle with Rajon Rondo. Rondo has been told to put, go. Yeah. It's, it's open season. It's open competition because now with LeBron, the Lakers are thinking – win now. Of course. They're not yeah. even committed to the youngsters. Yeah. Now, whether they use these youngsters to go out and trade for Kawhi, maybe that's what they're thinking. But right now, they are in win yeah. now mode, even though they're not a title contender, I don't believe. But they are saying, okay. let's go out well, and have the you, best so team So you we say have. not title contender. I, I believe there's only like three or four in the league, and I think okay. the Lakers are one of them. We got Golden State, obviously, head and shoulders. I think Boston second. I think well, Houston— Well, because they're in the East. You, these are the title— be, you got to put Philly in there now. Philly if and Boston in, the in the East. Philly and Boston. And, and I then, put, I, I, even though I don't think they could win a title, no, and don't I wouldn't say pick them Golden to win. State. Oh, I'm sorry, don't say Toronto. You have to oh put my Toronto gosh, in there me? with the East. They had one problem in the Eastern Conference, and guess what? He's now in the Western Conference. So the Raptors are now title contenders. In the East, they wouldn't win it, but they could get to the finals. That's the definition of a title contender. If you can get to the finals, you can contend for the title. I, I will bet you any dinner anywhere you want in the United States of America. We'll do that a the dinner. Rap Raptors don't make the finals. It's not okay. happening. I, I'm not chance. predicting None. it, oh, yeah. but they have a chance. No. The, you got you got Boston's the favorite in the East, Philly second, second. Right. and then Toronto is in that grouping. And I'm I'm going to say coming up is Milwaukee. Yeah, Mike Blue knows going to make them better. So I, I'm not predicting Toronto. I'm just saying I would put them as a team that can contend for the Eastern so Conference. So in the West. So those three. In the West, you got two. As Golden far as State, them. Houston, and then why can't the Lakers be third? Why can't they, they be can. above New Orleans, but that doesn't mean But that doesn't mean they can beat Houston or right. Golden State. I'm just going to say Houston lost their best 3 and D player in Trevor Ariza. We're, we'll see what happens with Capella. They get I Capella. don't know that they're going to win 65 again. If they Chris lose Paul Capella, breaking down that's all the huge. Time, I, I just have to win. It's not about winning 65. Nobody cares about that. It's about the playoffs. And I would put, look, I think Golden State and Houston in the West are the clear top two teams. Now, I will give you this. I put the Lakers in that grouping with Oklahoma City, with Utah, with New Orleans. U Utah's got to be above Oklahoma City, by the way. No, they're in the, they're in the same grouping. And right. Portland, if you throw them in there, I mean – We'll see what San Antonio does. But they, they're, the Lakers are in that group uh, let's give where they could finish th third or sixth 52 or seventh. wins, I'll say, for the Lakers. Remember, 35 last year. That's fine. That's going to be probably third in the they West. They could win. Not necessarily. 49 was third in the West yeah, last year. Yeah, but they playing. The, the teams Spurs are, are going to be worse That's an Kawhi aberration. Like, the, the 49 was an aberration. And one is the teams are playing each other. There have been recent years where – 
a team won 50 games in the West and missed the playoffs, Let, or 49 and missed the playoffs. I don't want to get in the final word, but I have to add, no team in the modern era has gone to the finals five years in a row. Golden State's trying to do that, okay? Mentally, physically, they've played an entire another season in the had, last had four years. Had any player in the modern era made eight straight finals? No, had not been done. Had two teams in the modern era made four straight finals against I each other? I don't believe no, so. No, so... We, we're seeing, so just we're penciling, seeing players average triple doubles. With the three-point line, the history is changing. So you're penciling Golden State into the finals? Yes. Okay. They're the best team by far. Right. Chris, let's move on to number two. Kawhi Leonard. Still on the market, maybe. The Spurs could try to entice him with the Supermax. Do they try to keep him? I personally think he wants Lakers. You, you, it depends who you read, who, what sources you listen to whether he wants definitely Lakers or just Los Angeles. I think in a year, that guy's going to want to be here in L.A. I wouldn't trade for him if I'm a team in the East. Did, if, did, if where did Paul feeling, George want to go? Well, that, that's, that's an entire another story. I'm, can you answer my question? Well, Paul George ended up with OKC because the Lakers didn't go after him at the end. They wanted Kawhi oh, Leonard. the Lakers would not have taken – it wasn't a, It wasn't an either or. Did Magic Johnson even try to recruit yes. Paul George? The final days. He did. So you're telling me Magic Johnson said – Hey, Paul George, we want you to come to L.A. Will you That's sit down and talk to me? That's your story? What do you mean story? That the We're talking Lakers about did Leonard. not want Paul George? They wanted him for 11 months. In the last two weeks, it was all Kawhi Leonard, Lakers, Kawhi Leonard, Lakers. It wasn't an either-or proposition. Well, they could not you afford could trade. Both. Yes, they could. They, I, I had a salary cap expert, Larry Kuhn, on my radio show. He said you cannot afford Kawhi, Paul George, and LeBron. Why not? Physically, they could not do it under the cap. They. It wasn't about the cap. You all you had to do, you could sign LeBron and Paul George in free agency to max deals. Yes, and or even a little less, but well, yeah, that's to the max, thing, a little less. Know, to Paul max George deals. ain't taking less. He took. He didn't take the most money he could get in Oklahoma City. Seven million. And then they could have they could have stretched Luau Dang cool. to get even more room. They could have got well, the salary they cap. They say got, it was impossible. For Larry Coon is great. It, they could have got Paul George and and LeBron, right. okay. and then traded for Kawhi. So my so point it wasn't was, either way. don't don't there go was there. No shot of that. He and chose as such, Oklahoma City. As such, I would not trade if I'm a team in the East, Boston or Philly. I would not trade for Kawhi. I'm with you on Boston, even though I love Kawhi there. Unless they could get him for a steal, now I would give up Gordon Hayward. If I was if I was Boston, I would give up Gordon You're Hayward. You're really down on Gordon Hayward. Aren't no, you? he's 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 good, but he's not a superstar. I, Kawhi Leonard's a superstar. That's a fact. I would give up Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, and the Memphis pick, which is protected through eight next year, and then a, some protections the following year, and then unprotected. So I would do that if I'm if I'm Boston. Is that better than your Philly package? Gordon? It might, it might be. I mean, but so I'm just saying, I wouldn't break the bank if I'm Boston to get Kawhi because I like what they have coming back. Gordon Hayward's not breaking the bank? No. Brad no. Stevens' guy? Gordon Hayward is is going to be Kawhi. Kyrie next year is the first option, clearly. Right. I think Jason Tatum, in short order, if not right away, will be the second guy. And you got Horford now. Jalen Brown, I think, is going to be better than Gordon Hayward in two years, if not sooner. I mean, Jalen Brown is a legitimate two-way player. I think you need to player. put some respect on Gordon Hayward. Really? I mean, <laughs> really? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. This was a guy uh, everybody in the league wanted last summer at this time. Everybody wanted Gordon Hayward. And everybody now all of a sudden wants he's not everybody. as good as Jalen Brown? Jalen Brown is legit. I boy. agree. They're good. But right Jaylen now. Jalen Brown is going to be one of the best two-way players in the league. But that's, yeah, let's not no. settle on that. Let me get to your answer. Philadelphia, that's the team that should go for Kawhi Leonard. Philadelphia, you got the Brett Brown connection, was in the San Antonio coaching coaching staff, right, right. had a relationship with Kawhi. You, the doctor that Kawhi has, has worked with in New York works for the Sixers. Yes. You got these connections there. You got a great point guard, pass first. You got a great big man. Kawhi Leonard could go to Philadelphia. Now, it's a risk. I, I'm with you. It is a risk. But... Kawhi Leonard, I believe if he goes to Philadelphia and it goes well basketball-wise, the city, it's a good city. Okay. Well, uh, I think there's there's a chance that he could stay you there. Get, so obviously the, the Spurs are going to ask for Fultz and Sarich and a pick. Are you, are you not, giving? Not, not, not obviously. They, not, that's not obvious. They might. I'm, I'm trying to give them Robert Covington. I'll give them Miami's 
First, under, un, uh, unprotected, 21, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Paul you're George is better than Oladipo. You're getting out of the first round of the playoffs. You're going forward, all right? You, you getting out of the first round? Of the, mm. We'll see. The West is tough, man. It ain't the Eastern Conference, as I told you in answer number one. All right, now, <laughs> all I'm saying is if I'm Philadelphia, I take the chance. Because I still, if I lose him, I still got my two building blocks to what build around. What is your guess for where Kawhi ends up? Do you think he, Philly. De- do you think he demands a trade? Well, he's already told him he no, wants no, to no. be traded. No, no, no. I'm going to sit out the season, which no, is he, rumored. No, that is not. No. Stop Will it. he pull a Kyrie he, he, Irving and say, no, I'm getting surgery on I'm my, telling on my quad? You, Ka- Kawhi Leonard will not sit out the season. He will not threaten to sit out the season. He's not going out like that. He is a guy that has some class. He will not go out like that. So Kawhi Leonard's going to show up in camp, be if, a model If he has citizen. to, he, ha- he will. This is a guy last year who got backstabbed by Tony Parker, got kind of backstabbed by Manu, by Pop, and he's going to face them in the locker room? Is he a punk? I mean, he, he sat out 80, Is he 70, a punk? He sat out 80, 72 games last year with a quad injury that Tony Parker said his was 100 times worse. Doctors in New York said he wasn't ready to play. But what if he comes back this Did season? Did the doctors, were the Kawhi doctors says, on his payroll, were the doctors like I don't know. in cahoots with him to but come up with Kawhi some theories? All Kawhi Leonard has so to do is come back and say, you know, I'm, I'm still not ready to go. You don't think that's a possibility, Chris? No. You cannot. You sit out two straight years, essentially, in the NBA. Now, first of all, everybody's going to look at you like you're mentally weak, you're physically weak, uh, you're a punk, and it's going to mess with your money. And you know what he would say? It's going to mess with your money. But do you know what he would say? Go tell Tony Parker I'm a punk. Go oh tell Popovich. Gosh. You want to take shots at me? Nobody takes shots at their teammates like that after they've been together for seven years, Chris. That was dirty. I don't I care, care how dirty he was. You a pitch. man. Walk into the line. If you got a problem with Tony Parker, walk up to Tony Parker. You got something to say to me? No, oh, yeah, that's a real classy. You gonna fight your teammate in the locker room? That's that's classier than sitting out a whole season. I mean, I don't so think gonna want do somebody. That. Who's gonna want to go after somebody who went in the locker room and punched out Tony Parker? Who's gonna want? What teams are gonna want to go after him? You just knocked out your teammate. I didn't. Nobody didn't. wanted Boogie Cousins. He was just on the market. We're gonna talk about him in a sec. Hold on. You can't uh, punch out a teammate, really? Chris. That's not really. That. Didn't the GOAT? Oh gosh, yeah, didn't Michael, the GOAT Michael Jordan. punch out a teammate? Well, Michael Jordan's winning five championships. He can punch out a teammate before he I wins thought, number I six. I thought nobody wanted a player that punched out a teammate. It's Michael Jordan. But, but you was Michael Jordan the player? Oh gosh, Chris, I, you're not doing this, are you? Are you I, yes, serious? I'm doing this. Okay. I'm not so saying that's your, no. Hold on, okay, I'm not. Okay, good, okay. You you went to lengths I didn't want to go to. I didn't say Kawhi Leonard should punch out Tony Parker. Oh, nice. I said he should show up if they don't trade him and play his butt off. And then if he wants to leave as a free agent, leave. I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm, you the one made it a big, oh, yeah. Tony Listen. Parker said this. Then I'm saying, if he really no, had no, no. a problem Tony with Tony Parker, Parker like apologize to Kawhi, and then I'll come in the locker room okay. and say hi to you. No, apology yeah, yeah, yeah. or not. Whether he apologized or not, I'm a man. You know how many times I've worked with people that have dogged me behind my back? Or dog me in public? Well, so what did it's you, called what did you being do? a did professional. You a, did you demand an apology? Did you go step up and say, what's if your If I beef? have to demand an apology, I would. Sometimes I just go do my job. It's called being a professional. Okay. You are under contract. What I'm told is Kawhi Leonard will be a professional. That would, that would be nice. He I would does, like it, to see it'd that. Be, come on, man. He ain't sitting out a whole season. That's ridiculous. Other people are reporting that. He's it's not worth, sitting out a whole speak, season. Uh, talking about here. All right, final question, because we need to give you a layup, Chris. You're struggling here. Is Boogie Cousins good or bad for the NBA when he goes to the Golden State Warriors? People on social media freaking out. 25 and 13. How could he do this? I'm not watching the NBA. I mean, Chris. Give me that, your, give me this your is me. so overblown and stupid. Like... Number one, nobody really wanted Boogie Cousins around the league. 29 other teams could have called him. Boogie Cousins said not one team called Why him. Why didn't they want him? Well, he's, a, he's had a history of problems in the locker room dating back to Sacramento. He's an indifferent defender. Uh, there's plenty of video last year of him loafing on defense, arguing with officials. I think he led the league in technical fouls once or twice. Uh, and he's coming off an Achilles, which is one of the worst injuries you can come off of, especially at 270 pounds at the age, I believe he's 28. Going to be 29 soon. Like, that's tough. Go look at what happened to Elton Brand. About the same age, same weight. 
He was a shell of his former self. I mean, there's no market for Boogie Cousins. I think this is a genius move. There's no pressure for him in Golden State. But the, the idea that this makes the Warriors, like, unbeatable, no. I, I just don't buy well, that at all. They Does he were, even fit perfectly with this team? No, he no. doesn't. They're the definitive favorite without yeah, with Boogie. With without, yeah. With him, the talent gap just grows that much stronger. With Golden State, there was one weakness. And I used to say it, play big. Pound him. San Antonio gave him some trouble by going big with LaMarcus Aldridge and Pau Gasol. Now, that doesn't exist anymore. They were, uh, I, I don't, they weren't a soft team, but they were relatively soft. I mean, you know, you could kind of get physical with them, push them around. That's how Cleveland beat them. That's how Memphis gave them problems in the, in the past. Now with Boogie, you're not going to be – they're not soft. You're not going to be pushing them around. They're not going to cower like – I they know Draymond Green anyway, watches this. But they're going to be a little tougher. take back some of the soft stuff? No, Draymond, Draymond, Draymond is clearly is not soft. Oh. I'm just saying overall, people view Steph and, and Durant kind of softer. Yeah, but, but, I, and I'm not saying – again, let me – I'm not saying they're soft. Okay. But they were a finesse team. Let's put it that way. Mm. They were a team that the feeling was get physical with them, beat them up, things like that to give yourself a chance. Now with Boogie, you got somewhat of an enforcer. He has to be on his best behavior. Right. Okay, he has no choice. If he and if he acts up, if he's bad in the locker he's room, gone. if he's bad on the court, doesn't adjust. Yeah, you get rid of him and you don't miss a beat. No. So I think I agree with. You. I don't want to hear the fans and other teams complaining. Oh, this is unfair. Golden State's playing by the same rules as everybody else. Their front office has been gangster. Period. The end. They. I mean, this was a great move. You're right. Nobody else made him an offer. I mean, so Detroit like, could have called up. Oh, we need you, but like anybody could well, have done this. Have, but I mean, you're right. Anybody, Detroit, you I actually I mean. think the Lakers, for one year, I would have taken a chance. I'm not a well, huge and, boogie and, and fan. And that's a good point. But I would have taken a chance to see if he acts, if he can act right with LeBron, if he fits with LeBron, and then maybe you go forward they, if it works out. They gave Rondo nine million dollars. He made three last year. The Warriors just gave Boogie 5.3. Uh, that, to me, something's off there. Now, I know Rondo is healthy, has been playoff Rondo, tested. Rondo, that's a big he's loss a, for he, New Orleans. He's he a big great. addition to the Lakers defensively. He's going to toughen up Lonzo. But I, it's tough for me to fathom how they can pay Rondo 9 mil and, and not even make a play for Boogie. No, uh, something they, seems they clearly off didn't want Look, like you said, Boogie's had his problems in the locker room. And and out and he was better in New Orleans, but he still has that reputation. Yeah. He, we see him with the refs, and I agree with you. I feel like Boogie, for the most part, has not played winning basketball. He's never been hollow, in the playoffs. They're hollow, right? I, I, don't, I wouldn't say hollow, but I just think, first of all, he doesn't play great defense. He, he loafs up the court. He's arguing with officials so he doesn't yeah. get up. You one can, that's not one person today was telling me the Warriors should be hard line with him and put in a three-second rule for Boogie. You have to be across half court within three. <laughs> I mean, seriously, within three seconds. That'll, that'll get you hustling, and that'll keep you from arguing with the refs. The little things, like, why is he taking six and a half threes a game? He's a 35% three-point shooter. Well, as big I, think as, that, I, I as actually big think as, that's helped his game become, like, next level. He's like a 25 and 13 guy thanks to the three-pointers. Yeah, but he shoots 35% and he shoots six and a half a game, and mm. he's 6'11", 270, and nobody could stop him on the block. He's a good passer. He could be killing Pete teams as they double him on the he block. He's a good passer. Passing out. So I'm just saying that's not smart. If I'm that big, I like that he can step out and hit the three here and there. I'm fine with him taking three, maybe four a game. But your bread and butter, if your boogie, is inside because nobody can stop you there. So that's what I mean. He's going to have to adjust. He's a ball stopper. Yeah, but for They're the not going to go for that and go stay. Why are people freaking out, Chris? Because from a talent, this dude is an elite talent. Talent. Mm -hmm. He is a tremendous talent. Top 15 player in the league? Oh, well, talent-wise, easily. Okay. You know, and probably, yeah, he's probably a top 15 player. Okay. And you just put him with four other All-Stars. So it looks lopsided. It looks really Now, he's probably not going to play lopsided. till February. Well, this idea of he, him being playing by Christmas, no, that's not, none of that stuff's happening. Yo, coming did, off an Achilles at 270 Rudy Gay pounds? did it. Now, now he's, he's smaller, like a, but yeah, still, small forward. Boogie's shooting for now. He, maybe he's uh, he's probably overstating. He's shooting for training camp, and he's been overweight like almost his entire career. He, he's he's not got a chiseled. lot to prove. Yeah, he on. knows as great as he is. We said top fifteen, top twenty I would for say sure. 20. He should have got a max contract. He's a max talent. He's a max player. But nobody was. He's playing for five million. So if he's got anything inside of him 
then he's going to have a great year, be a good soldier, and that's going to benefit hey, Golden State, and they're going to be unbeatable if he keeps just his Just let me do something real quick. How much of a slap in the face is it to Boogie for them to go after Randall two years, $18 million? Like right after they steal Rondo to the Lakers, they go offer Julius Randle well, over think, Boogie. To me, I I, I, I think they needed Rand. Like, but Randle can't they play lost, with Miritich and Anthony Davis. Once they lost uh, Boogie, I'm sorry, Rondo, they needed another playmaker. Because Drew Holiday was great off the ball, and Randle can make plays. You know, he's a versatile player. Can't shoot the three. Can't spread the floor. I don't think he starts. But he's a versatile player. We'll see if he starts or not. But he can play inside. He can. He, he's a good. I think that's a good pickup for them. I mean, I, I would have loved if I'm them. They they didn't offer Rajon Rondo the full mid level. Well, how much was that? The well, Boogie's playing for it at five point okay. three million. They didn't offer him the Lakers full mid level. Lakers overpaid for, for Rondo. Well, no, because they, they did they, nine no, million. My point is, New Orleans was willing to give him like two years, oh. eight million, something like that. Two million, eight, nine million. So money, but yeah. for one year, $9 million. I like Rondo. Yeah. Hey, I well, think New Orleans definitely should One quick should've note kept on Rondo. If you watched any of that Portland series, he was awesome. Oh, he was phenomenal. I mean, and if you go he back two Drew years Holiday ago. They were playing like one of the best backcourts Two years in the ago, the Bulls against the number one seeded Celtics led 2 nothing because of Rondo. He's a winner. It, I'm telling you, I, this is not a knock on Lonzo. If come playoffs, and the Lakers will be in the playoffs, I'm starting Rondo at point guard to start games. He's that good in well, the playoffs. This guy you is, got 82 he's a games money to see player. how things go. The question is who will start opening night? I, it, they might start Rondo opening night. Yeah, maybe. I, I, again, I'm a who finishes games, not starts. I think finishing what? final five, seven minutes, that's more important than who starts. You want to let Lonzo start, I don't think Rondo's going to care. But he wants to be on the court in winning time. But, it, but yeah, whatever. But Lonzo's going to have to fight for his position. Because the Lakers now are like win now mode. They're not built around these youngsters now. They're built around vets. And so Lonzo's going to have to fight how for much, his position. How well did Lonzo do fighting against De'Aaron Fox? Okay. Uh, when the guys get up in it, Patrick Beverly. Guys oh, yeah. challenge Lonzo's going to come at Lonzo's kind of folded. Rondo's going to be talking trash about LeVar in practice. I, I can't wait. we got to get to some practices, Boussard. Well, Magic let us they, in? They don't, they don't show you practices. You'll get in for the last 15 minutes when they shoot free throws. That's about okay. it. <laughs> I'll do it. It's right near where I live, man. Come on. We had some games, though. That's for sure. Yes. All right, there it is, Knockdown J. Three for me, O for J. Peace. We'll see you next week. <laughs> go to iTunes, go to SoundCloud, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us five stars. Leave us a comment. And keep tuning in to In The Zone. Oh, I like that. A little twist. <laughs>